<sighs> hey, howdy folks. Killman here again with another little video, and this time to describe and discuss my hairy friend here. This guy, some of you may know who he is, some of you recognize him. Uh, he is the demon werewolf, or werewolf demon, from the classic 80s horror comedy, more horror, an American werewolf in London. Um, he's not the big werewolf, he's not the American werewolf in London, he's, he features in a staggeringly effective nightmare sequence earlier on in the film. Um, this guy's made by Trick or Treat Studios, uh, or Tots as uh, mask aficionados like to call them. Uh, it's a wonderful replica of what is seen in the movie. And in the film, you know, of course, I don't need to really describe too much about the background of this film. John Landis made the movie back in 1981. Um, Rick Baker did all the effects and the transformations and the, uh, the gore and got an Oscar for his troubles, uh, a well-earned Oscar. He designed all the uh, the makeup, the sculpts, and the werewolf um, designs. He designed designs. He was very good like that. Uh, and this particular guy uh, features in a sequence where David, who is the American werewolf, or about to be the American werewolf in London, played by David Norton, uh, he's been bitten, his mate's been killed, they ventured out stupidly on the moors after foolishly entering the air, the slaughtered lamb. Not a nice pub to be in. And uh, his mate's been killed, savaged, ripped up by the werewolf. That werewolf was then subsequently killed, and uh, David has been taken to a London hospital, suffering from his wounds, wakes up from a coma, his wounds have miraculously almost healed, and uh, he's about to become a bloody werewolf. His mate, uh, Jack, who was murdered, um, returns in various degrees of decomposition to warn him about what's about to happen to him come the next full moon. You'll kill. You'll make more people like me. I'm not having a good time here. The undead surround me. You ever talk to a corpse? It's boring. But all his, uh, his warnings fall on deaf ears because David doesn't really believe what's going on. And yet, throughout all this, he's having these nightmares, these strange, horrible uh, nightmares of various sort of running through the forest, attacking deer, um, just nightmarish visions, to the point where he's got, he gets terrified of you know, uh, going to sleep on his own. So he asks his consultant, um, Dr. Hirsch, uh, can he have some company to, you know, soothe away his nightmares when he hits slumber time. So who better than the, the gorgeous, every boy's fantasy nurse, Jenny Agatha, <gasps> reads him a story. And off he goes to dreamland. And the dream sequence he has this time has gone down in cinematic history. He's transported back to his home in suburban Americana. And he's studying at his desk. Um, his younger brother and sister are sitting on the floor in front of the fire watching The Muppet Show. And uh, his dad's lounging about. His mum's doing the dishes or she's making the tea or doing something. And I knock at the door. Mum goes, get the door. Dad gets up to open the door. And what does he find outside? But this guy and three of his cohorts all dressed in Nazi regalia and toting Uzi submachine guns who then blow him away and cause rampage in the house, kill the kids and kill his mother and they slit David's throat uh, in the dream sequence. It's an absolute classic. It's also a fabulous dream within a dream sequence because when he wakes up horrified after getting his throat cut and there's Jenny Agatha sitting next to him. What's up? I've just had a nightmare. She goes, I've just got the perfect thing. And she opens the curtains, let the daylight in. But behind the curtains, another one of these guys, it goes and stabs at the bits. And then David wakes up all over again. Holy shit. 
things ain't going well for our boy. And the writing's on the wall. He's going to become a werewolf. Come next full moon. So this guy, right, made by Tots, Trick or Treat Studios in America, uh, had the rights to the American werewolf in London uh, mask range. And, uh, and there's quite a few. Now, as I say, in that sequence, there's four of these guys. There's a baldy, snaggletooth hair licked thing, which uh, is tremendous, tremendous vision. And uh, you can get him. There's one with a Nazi helmet on, and uh, he's kind of decomposed flesh is ripped away, fangs are on jaws are on show. Uh, he's good. Uh, what else can you get? Oh, this guy. But there is another one which so far has not become available, uh, to my knowledge anyway. And he's great as well. He's he's another werewolfy type thing. He's he's not as hairy as this guy, but he's a fanged monstrosity. And he has, if any of you know uh, the the group, the Stranglers, who were very prevalent at the time the American Werewolf was, was made. Uh, Hugh Cornwell, who was the uh, the front man, lead singer of the Stranglers. Well, this this other one is sporting a very similar haircut to him. Mm, me thinks maybe Hugh Cornwell said, no, no one's getting a mask of a werewolf that looks like me. That's just my assumption. I don't know. Hopefully it will come available because I want to get all of them. Uh, this guy, now, I'm going to show him off a little bit. What I like about this guy is you only see him in a few brief frames in that finished sequence. Uh, he does a bit of machine gun fire. Uh, there's, a, there's a fabulous, when the kids get slaughtered, uh, Miss Piggy's on the screen, somebody back heels the TV screen and the tube blows. Vintage you know, tube TV, uh, cathode ray. And uh, I think it's this guy that does that. Well, I'm sticking to that. This is a bit more, bit more to do. But I love the look of this fella. Now, in the film, his the fair here would in fact probably come around a little bit more into the face. Uh, so I may well reposition some fair to try and make it a bit more authentic. But otherwise, this is an exceptionally good um, re reproduction of that guy. You know, look at it, it's beautiful. He's got these almost satanic um, goat eyes which bulge out. Marvellous. I've added some shading around the eyes here and around the nostrils uh, just to give it a bit more definition, a bit more uh, depth to them. But otherwise, the sculpt on this is magnificent. It's very, very uh, authentic. It's very. Well, it's very realistic, as you can see. You know, look at this guy. Look at him. Oh, look at it. You know, isn't that glorious? You know. As I say, I will play about with the fair a little bit more. But the um, the colouring on on the on the fair, the texture of it is magnificent. The sculpt, the detail, the depth, and the contours, the fangs. You know, it's, it, it is good. He, by the way, he's sitting on a Mjolnir. This is a Thor's hammer. <laughs> uh, I have lots of little things I, I sit these masks on. This one seems to suit him quite well. I'm going to come around here. You can see this guy really well, can't you? Yeah, you can see. Look at him. Look, look. Now, you imagine this guy in a Nazi uniform. And uh, hold on one second. Because believe it or not, he sports one of these. It's not real. It's a BB gun. It's a BB gun. This is actually the, the, the Mac uh, 11, the repro of the Mac 10. But he comes in and he's like... <laughs> what a... It, it's just a nightmare vision. Of course it is. I'm going to put that away now. Because I hurt somebody. And uh, I'm also getting the the big werewolf mask, which of course is uh, when David finally becomes the uh, the werewolf, the, the American werewolf in London. He becomes the hellhound. He's on four legs. He's a in the long shots you see of him. He's almost like a 
fucking grizzly bear, you know, he's big, big, you know. And I, I've always been a fan more of the bipedal, the upright, walking on two legs, wolfman approach to, um, to lycanthropy. I've seen, of course, in like Lon Chaney Jr. playing the wolfman, Henry Hull playing the, the original Werewolf of London, uh, which was set, which was filmed back in 1935, 36, I think it was. Um, and that's a wonderful movie. O obviously, Oliver Reed playing um, Leon the Vampire in Hammer's Curse of the Werewolf. And um, I forgot the other guy's name, but in Legend of the Werewolf by Tyburn Movies. And these guys would always have like a pretty much humanistic face with the fair ringing the face. Obviously, a pronounced snout, eyebrow, big bushy eyebrows and great big fangs. To me, that was always scarier because you could see the vestige of the human in there. So the human and the wolf combined really made that quite a scary um, appearance. Once the human had undergone the full transformation into a great big four-legged wolf, you know, it never seemed quite as scary to me until American Werewolf. And in fact, there's been no film since American Werewolf which has scared me of, you know, the full four-legged variation. Because that thing, ladies and gentlemen, when you see David Norton in a full-lit room transform into the werewolf, for the first time, you see, come the end of it, when he's on four legs, his spine has changed, his entire body's changed, his limbs have stretched, his face has grown out, he's gone ultra hairy. Ladies and gents, humanity has left the building and the beast is all that remains. Um, he's fantastic, I, I adore. But this guy, this guy here, now, as I say, Trick or Treat Studios do arrange, they have the license to um, all the available masks from um, American Werewolf. And I say, we're only missing one, uh, which is from that sequence. And I would, as I say, maybe Hugh Cornwell didn't like the, the similarity. Well, that's just my idea. I don't know for a fact. Um, but I'm going to get them all. Now, in a few days' time, get this. The big werewolf mask is going to turn up again from Trick or Treat Studios. <sighs> now that that's that's the daddy, that's the big hairy daddy of them all. My God, I can't wait for that. Um, but for now, you know this is a. I love this. As I say, some you can modify these things a little bit. Looking on, he's he's only in a few brief still brief frames from that sequence. Which is a shame, um, and his fear, I think, does come into the face a bit more. So, but that's easily done. You just just stick stick it in a little bit more. It's not hard to do. Just bring it around to frame the face a bit more. As a little aside, that sequence in the film, Rick Baker, the special effects maestro who created all the effects for that film, uh, he didn't have much time to make the uh, the masks for that sequence, and John Landis who directed it and wrote the film, he said, don't worry, I don't want animatronic faces, I don't, I don't want these things to move, just make them fixed, you know, rubber masks. So that's what you get. Now, if you watch that sequence, they are genuinely just little, uh, obviously, you know, like kind of like very rigid. These things aren't going to move. They're just frozen in place. Sorry, I'm just adjusting the, um, the camera here so you can try and get this guy's jaws in and his little tongue. No, oh, he's so cute, isn't he? The camera's still moving, but hey, you get the, you get the effect. Uh, so they were just rigid masks. Now that added to the you know, surrealism, the nightmare surrealism of that sequence, because it was almost pantomime. They were just these fixed faces. Even the, the baldy one, who, who has, actually has David hair pulled back and has a knife to his throat, he, he looks, you see, he gets the most airtime, leans up, and he's got this, well, this weird lip and you know, snaggled tooth and drool. But it's a fixed face, it's a fixed mask, and uh, it works. It genuinely works. They look horrific and they're horribly memorable. Um, so, all I can, you know, if you're into your masks and your, your horror films and you want replicas of these things and um, 
you know, a mem bit of memorabilia from these classic movies. I can recommend stuff like this. Look at him. Look at him. Oh, and of course, it's a mask. So, you can wear it. Uh, I don't want to do that, though. When I go on trick-or-treating, and I do. On Halloween, I, I, I even go to work, be decked as a werewolf. Um, I've got a different mask and, and set up for that. I wouldn't wear one of these. These are uh, a bit too precious. I'm not going to roll around and get drunk as a skunk, you know, in one of these things. I will, uh, I've got my stunt werewolf mask for that one. Um, but yeah. It's, it's wonderful, isn't it wonderful? You know, the eyes are just purely demonic. I always loved that, that the snarl, the sort of, it's going, ah! <laughs> yeah, ultra surprised, ah! Uh, and then bulging goat eyes, just wonderful stuff, wonderful stuff. I don't know if you can hear the music playing here. That is actually um, Elmer Bernstein's uh, score to American Wealth in London, uh, which to this day, you can't get. The score was full of, you know, songs that had moon in the title, you know, uh, moon dance, blue moon, Bad Moon Rising, but Elmer Bernstein's score is uh, wonderful. Listen to this. How eerie is this? It all details, you know, the North York Moors and the, you know, the coming of the full moon and all this. It's just tremendous stuff. So, as I say, just a little video um, to show you uh, the quality of Trick or Treat Studios masks. Uh, and because you know, mask or not, this is this sits on a shelf for me. When I finally get my room sorted out and be deck it as the uh, the slaughtered lamb, the pub from American Werewolf, uh, which I really want to get done. Uh, and every Halloween, I say, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it this year, I'm gonna do it this year. And I never fucking do it, uh, but I'm gonna do it, <laughs> especially now I'm getting the masks. I love these guys. I love all the American Elf masks will be there. I love mannequins all set up. I love the dartboard there. You made me miss. I've never missed that dartboard before. You know, it's just incredible. So evocative. So mysterious. And we just don't see eye to eye. <sighs> see, he doesn't like gingers. He likes this sort of Cobalt, silver, shot through, grey look. The grey wolf. Isn't he great? So as long as you can have a good look at him. So there you go. Shout out to Trick or Treat Studios and their masterwork here. I'm going to get all of these masks and you're going to see all these at some point. Um, so, in the meantime folks, Stay clear of the moors and beware the moon. Halloween fast approaches.